Smoking hashish and opium may not fit our idea of a respectable religious celebration. But for the Pashtun tribes whose livelihood depends on the poppy, this is an ancestral, even spiritual pursuit. Only here could you find the reputed descendant of a saint proudly heading up a hash den. But there's little joy for the government in scenes like this. For Pakistan, hashish and opium have become a curse, one they've targeted with a holy war. But in taking on the Pashtun, the casualties may well be high. These are the mountains and valleys of the northwestern frontier province, home to the Pashtun and the opium poppy. Enough poppy is grown here to produce 180 tonnes of opium, or 18 tonnes of pure heroin. To see how the Holy War was going, we headed for the Nihag Valley, a Pashtun stronghold and the country's single largest opium growing area. Fez Muhammad is the chief of Dogram, the first village we encountered. He's also one of the community's largest and most vocal poppy farmers, who goes nowhere without his armed guards. For 30 years we've been growing poppies. Our major source of livelihood is first God, then opium. For Fez Mohammed, opium is not a drug, but a cash crop. Although he grows some wheat and onions, with an extended family of 33, he says he could not survive without opium. Half an acre of wheat, the paltry size of most land holdings here, brings in only 1,000 rupees, $33. This opium crop earns 20 times that. A few years ago, these farmers and other Pashtuns fought the government over forestry concessions. 90 people were killed. According to Fez Muhammad, that's nothing compared with what will happen if the government tries to destroy their poppy crops. The Pashtun tribes are born of the same parents and they are ready to die in one trench because they have the same demand. You can't use force to stop our tribes from growing poppy. This is what I believe. We are very much concerned, uh, but our first effort will be to persuade them firmly through local... Nawaz Malik coordinates the 14 agencies involved in Pakistan's anti-drug crusade. He doesn't want to fight the farmers, but says he will if he has to. Uh, if uh, the situation demands, then uh, I think uh, government is determined to uh, use force. <laughs> Not only do the Pashtun have the will to fight, they also have the means. This is Dara, the arms capital of the northwestern frontier province, Pakistan's version of Dodge City. You can buy anything you want here, and people do, from pen guns to rocket launchers. But the weapon of choice is the AK-47, the Kalashnikov. The Kalashnikov is known as the jewellery of the Pashtun. By the age of 10, every boy has one and knows how to use it. They're everywhere and they're cheap. It's uh, 20,000 rupees. 20,000 rupees, so around about 460 US dollars. US dollars. Facing the very real threat of armed resistance, the Pakistani government is trying the softly, softly approach to wiping out opium. 
Through nurseries such as this, the government is encouraging farmers to substitute opium with other crops, such as oranges. The United Nations and US have pumped millions of dollars into such projects, as well as into road construction and irrigation, but with little success. For the people of Dogram, the alternatives to opium just don't stack up. Industry and jobs, not oranges, are the buzzwords ringing across the poppy belt. And Fez Mohammed says they'll accept nothing less. We don't expect the government to fight us. We expect them to help us develop. If the government can build factories for us and help develop our area, then it will be a matter of pride for the factories to stop growing poppy. But James Magnor, the US narcotics attaché in Pakistan, says that's unrealistic given Pakistan's budget. 80% of their of last year's budget was designated for military expenditure and debt service. That leaves precious little left over for, uh, well, education, uh, narcotics control and other things that, uh, you know, that need to be attended to. We need a lot more uh, resources to strengthen anti-narcotics enforcement uh, arrangements. Uh, definitely we need a uh, lot more uh, force, we need helicopters for them, uh, we need uh, high-powered uh, vehicles for them, and uh, weapons and uh, uh, communication equipment and uh, that will enable them to put up better fight. With few resources, this is how the Pakistani authorities are fighting the drug war, through traditional talk fests called jirgas. Here, Azmat Araksai, the district commissioner of Deir, is trying to convince local tribal elders that it's in their best interests to destroy the poppy crop. It's a carrot and stick process that can last weeks, even months. But finally today, the district commissioner has got the go-ahead he's after. We have to move together. If any changes occur, we must be prepared. A deal struck, the police move off to destroy the chosen poppy fields. This operation is small. Sometimes there are 500 police. Clearly, the government is targeting this farmer because he's unable to fight back, unlike those we met in Dogram. Over the past five years, the country's poppy crop has jumped 30% from its low of 5,500 hectares, despite the government's mix of gentle and not-so-gentle persuasion. Even those farmers who can't fight back don't take this destruction lying down. I say about this thing, they should compensate me for this loss because we have worked hard on this crop. The government must do something for us. If it doesn't, we'll grow ten times more poppy next year. How difficult has it been to convince people to destroy poppy crops? Uh, in fact, uh, this is a very pertinent question and it's, uh, as you saw it, just uh, you saw a glimpse of it, it's not an easy task. It's a tough job, <clears throat> but at this stage I think, don't think uh, it, it can be termed as a losing battle. The streets tell a different story. In Pakistan, one in every 11 males over the age of 15 is a drug addict. These people have no trouble getting supplies. Opium from Afghanistan and places like the Nihag Valley is smuggled into the remote tribal areas of the northwestern frontier province. There, in 100 secret laboratories, it's turned into heroin. It's these labs which are the nub of Pakistan's heroin problem. They create the demand for opium poppy. But because of a century-old pact with the Pashtun, the government is having real difficulty shutting the labs down. 
This is Khyber Agency, the tribal area bordering Afghanistan where the bulk of Pakistan's heroin is produced. It's no secret that this is a drug haven, but there's little the authorities can do except look on. At this point, Pakistani law ends and tribal law takes over, which means that heroin can be bought and sold with relative impunity. Behind these gates, tribal elders rule, not the Pakistani government. Khyber is one of eight districts where the Pashtun have held on to tribal law under an agreement signed with the British Raj. No Pakistani government has been game to challenge this, fearing a violent secessionist battle. We were allowed to travel a short way into Khyber Agency, but had to film secretly. Bags of hashish swung from shop awnings, and people were only too willing to tell us what was available. Hello. So, how much uh, hashish is here? Fifty grams. And how much does that cost? That's only thirty-three dollars. While heroin was not on display, we were told it's easy to get and inexpensive. And how much does it cost? Sumra gram per sofa. Twenty rupees per gram. If uh, the Pakistanis moved decisively against heroin manufacture in the in Khyber Agency, shut down those labs that there'd be no incentive for farmers to continue growing poppy and the problem might go away. The Pakistani government has had some success in its opium war, but not much. The Pashtun will still grow opium poppy until they're given a viable alternative, an alternative that looks a long way off. So the battle goes on. It's a solution that satisfies no one. The Pashtuns stand to lose a livelihood while the government risks an armed rebellion. Meanwhile, the heroin labs continue to harvest their deadly crop. And the number of addicts keeps growing. <laughs> 